Um, well, that's the home of all that, but sadly, to be blunt, you're kind of the home of, I think, what every YouTuber fears, right? Yeah. Yeah. The decline. Right. I think you went, you went from, if I'm not mistaken, millionaire, correct? A technical I was, millionaire. I was close. I was really, really close. At one point, I had, and I mean like for two days, when yeah. I say close, for two days, I had about $780,000, $800,000 in crypto, mm. went to bed one night, and it was worth half that when I woke up. Who's ready for the biggest pity party in the entire world? I hope you're all raising your hands, boys and girls. It's going to be an exciting one. The, the, the marathon of, of Boogie since the documentary is released just churns on. If you're unaware of what this show is, let me give you a synopsis. A couple months ago, I stumbled on this channel called Caleb Hammer, and he was doing this series called Financial Audit. He basically brings a bunch of people onto his show and goes over the finances with them and tells them what they have to do in order to get in a better financial standing. And I saw a post and Boogie was going to be on the show. Which is funny because we all know that Boogie is just a habitual liar <laughs> who's just not going to follow through with whatever Caleb ends up telling him to do. And Caleb seems like a very nice guy. He seems like he's looking out for the best interests of the people that come on his show. But Boogie, he's there to try and extend his clout in any way that he can. And in, in fact, Caleb's also doing that. He even admits halfway through this two hour long audit that he didn't get to run the numbers exactly how he typically does for a show because I'm sure this probably came together relatively quickly and you know Boogie's gonna catch himself in some lies but it's it's just really embarrassing <laughs> to see a 50 year old man's financial report where he's doing things like spending $900 on fast food a month holy shit dude so there's a lot of things to go through. I did my best to not include things that I've already talked about or were discussed in other videos elsewhere. I'm trying to only focus on new content. So, without further ado, let's see. Let's see how the boogster is doing. Can live off. Of how that. much are you making? Ten to fifteen thousand, I think. A month. Yeah, in a month, right? Incredible. Yeah. Yeah, it was incredible. I mean, incredible wealth, more than you could ever hope to spend, right? Yeah. Not to make any excuses, but keep in mind. I didn't come from money. I'm I'm the son of a coal miner. Me either. Right? And so no one in my life was ever trying to teach me what to do with it's money true. or how to do any, with money. So somebody comes along and they're like, look, I took my initial million yes. and I turned it into 20 million. Yeah. You should do that too. I don't really like the argument, oh, I didn't come from money, therefore I don't understand how to treat money. I understand that's a large segment of people who are poor. That's not how my ancestors were raised. <laughs> My my grandparents were super frugal in everything that they did. They would eat expired food. They would eat food that had mold on it. And I'm not saying that they were well off necessarily. They were probably upper poor class, lower middle class, somewhere in that range. But they lived through war-torn Europe. I mean, they did all these crazy things. And they figured out how to save money to send their kids to college at some point. Now, the kids figured it out on their own how to have a more stable lifestyle past that point. But I'm never going to take it as an acceptance of a 50-year-old man still blaming his upbringing for why he can't be financially viable in today's society. Especially somebody... And, he basically, we'll get to this a little bit later, he basically says that in his lifespan of YouTube, he really only had two or three years of really good YouTubing, which is what I would guess this 10 to 15k a month number comes from. And, you know, it, uh, it's hard for me to feel bad for Boogie when he had all this success, all this windfall, completely pissed it away and still wants to be the victim <laughs> and still wants to be a victim he wants to blame mcjuggernuggets for why he doesn't have any money if you at any point in your life have eight hundred thousand dollars of and that's basically 99 percent of your savings in crypto then 
you don't deserve <laughs> to have success. Sorry, that's just how life works out. Now, if you are a multimillionaire and 5% of, of your portfolio is in crypto, cool, go for it. That's a risk you're willing to take. But Boogie is too brain dead to understand how big of a risk and how stupid he was to follow through with that, comparing especially somebody like McJuggernuggets was way more successful than Boogie ever was on the platform. So yeah, no doy, he's able to invest that much more and get more out of it. But Boogie, he, he never sees the end goal. He sees, oh, food, that's good, I'll take that. Oh, money, cool, I'll take that without seeing the bigger picture. It's like he's looking inside of a telescope all the time fixating on some star and is completely unaware of the galaxy that's surrounding it it's just it's sad it's sad not for him but for us for having to deal with it Forty-four thousand in the last year but which gives us three thousand seven hundred twenty four dollars a month on average but we know a lot of that has to do with huge spike, spike came from this documentary? Latest documentary right okay the documentary link that, below mike's awesome and that's that spike absolutely will not be sustainable. Now I have a few other no. projects. I got a great podcast in the works called the the Low Cow Podcast. We just made our fifth episode. It's profitable. Uh, I think that's going to be an income bring in. I th that's easily going to bring in probably two grand a month. I think within the next yeah. six months. So that's going to be a nice lifeline. Mm -hmm. Ooh, we're, we're almost five million subscribers down to going to fall below four potentially. Yeah, it probably will. Probably within the by the time this airs, honestly, there's so, a very real chance. Yeah. With that, like there are there, there's clearly people that are still very dedicated boogie heads, and whatever never, you might call them. I did ask these people for help like a year ago, and the internet publicly shamed me. You've right? asked people for I provided help a lot. No value. Mm, I hate boogie. I really do. It's moments like this that really irritate me because he goes on to try and explain that that video of him crying and sobbing in the backyard asking for more money after he was just flexing about thinking about buying a Tesla and how he's a multi-millionaire and how he made so much money off of crypto then comes back six months later and says guys I'm really destitute I need money I had a really big health scare show up like no no you don't just get to do that and then also you get to play the victim it's it's embarrassing it's embarrassing that you continue to try and push this lie and then you say, oh, I'm, I'm being attacked by everybody. Why is everybody attacking me on the internet? What's going on, guys? I'm just a guy down on his luck. I'm just, I'm just a 500 pound guy down on his luck and everybody's so mean to me. It's like, how much of a pathetic loser do you have to possibly be? There's so many people I see out there who are still trying to make their job or whenever they're trying to do work and it's so much worse than it has been and they're trying to scrunch it together and at least they have some pride they have some pride they'll ask for help if they're absolutely desperate but they are thankful thankful to the high heavens if anybody would be willing to step up for them that's not boogie and if you really think about it $44,000 in the year, if you include the spike, let's say the spike accounted for 4 k of that. And let's say he, by the end of this year, he's going to end up with 40000 without that spike. All right. And if you do taxes on it, maybe he's around thirty k. I don't really know how it breaks down. I don't know what his other income sources are. Thirty k, if he was financially intelligent and had paid off his house... 30k a year would be tough, but he would be able to live off of it. He wouldn't have a mortgage payment, he'd just be paying property taxes, and then he has a lot of medical expenses that he'd have to upkeep. But, I'll, I'll bring this up later, but if he, if he actually had any interest in saving money, he could just try and lose weight, do anything. And, no, he just won't do that, he'll take the easy way out always, because that's the boogie way. The boogie way is taking the easy way out, baby. Why, why work hard for things when you can just beg on the internet? That's the that's like the number one quote in the Bible of DSP. And Boogie is just, he's just plagiarizing that bad boy. Look at the 17 year history. I had like two really good years. You've made $1.3 million. Incredible. In 17 years, and which comes like, out no. to what per year? I know, but that's still Are you a math guy? Well, I'm not a public math guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did I say, 1.3? Yeah. Over 17? 17 was when you started earning? Or 
15 would have been when I started earning. Um, yeah, 80, 86,000 hours a year. Well, I mean, you're above the median I mean, household well, income. Be out of a uh, disability, which is what I was on when I started the YouTube channel. Yeah, right? absolutely. But this managing money correctly and not spending a lot of it on prostitution would equate to us having at least a little bit of money now. Well, again, to address that important part of the doc, yeah. uh, number one, those numbers were rounded up. Mike admitted that those numbers are, are, are rounded up and adjusted. Uh, secondly, the majority of that money was spent traveling. And yeah. I went to the Game Awards. I went to Disney. I went. It was still a huge waste of money. But I think yeah. I think if we're dropping character, and I think if we're being genuine here, I think it's. I started. I tried to get a travel channel off the ground and try to do what my friend Jacob the Carpetbagger and Adam the Woo do. And I thought people would watch me go to Disneyland. Right? I'm a big fat weird guy trying to to do this. Do that. Turns out they did not want to watch me do that. The guy who's making ninety k a year for fifteen years straight and still doesn't have any retirement funds. Somehow, I don't know where all that money went that you're spending it all on travel. That doesn't make any sense to me at all. It, and maybe that's a sizable chunk that you took out. Maybe you lost $100,000 on traveling, trying to do this other business adventure. And, and may, maybe that's true. Still, that's only one, one year of salary out of the 15 years of salary. So if you were doing any basic <laughs> investment or saving strategies, you would easily be able, I wouldn't say necessarily to retire, he's living on an upper middle class income for the most part. He's living above the standards of a two income household across the nation, I'm pretty sure, especially in, in Arkansas. So he definitely could have bided some time for himself with that 1.3 million. And also if we, uh, that's not even like the whole picture. Like, if you include all of his other income elsewhere, I'm sure this dude in 15 years has made $2.5 million. And so he was really probably making like 180K to 200K a year for 15 years straight. And now he's broke. And it's like, but that's on, that's on the trolls for being mean to him. It's not like he was a condescending narcissistic asshole for his entire career. It, but no, it's it's our fault. It's not like he drove his wife away and is preying on young girls to fulfill himself in his life. No, 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 no. It's 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 my fault for for pointing out his flaws. <laughs> How dare I step outside of that box and criticize the almighty boogie? What do we do when you're no longer here and you've left nothing to a widow? Well, my process has always been when I met her without getting into her personal history too much, because it's not necessarily the place for it. Yep. But um, when I met her, she was struggling with severe social anxiety. Mm -hmm. She was struggling with um, just getting her life together. Uh, when I met her, I, I was talking to my friend, Michael, kid behind a camera, and his plan was just be the person you needed when you were in that position. Because that's who I was when I was her age. When I was 20 years old, just like her, um, I couldn't function in the world. I, I played EverQuest and World of Warcraft and did uh, built terrible websites and made a a a, 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 bare, a barely passable income. What does this have to do with you leaving or anything? Well, uh, hold on, I'm getting to that. Okay. If I left her destitute, yeah, my plan is to still leave her better off than she was. Yeah. Uh, if I have to sell everything I own, if I have to, and I have, we've we've made some concessions that I'm not entirely comfortable sharing um, because the people involved are private people. Sure. But I did move a roommate in. He's been helping a little bit here and there. Mm. Um, I had a roommate over the last 25 years. He's finally been able to kick in a little bit as well. So we are finding ways to. So there's two roommates. Yeah. yeah okay. Right. Has that boomer mindset of. Oh, I made a ton of money because the economy was good my entire life and I was able to buy my two-story house for $40,000 300 years ago and now it's worth $1 million. But don't worry, I decided to donate it to the local book club so that they could convert it into a local library instead of giving it to my children who live on minimum wage incomes. That's that's the mindset that we're dealing with with Boogie over here. He's like, he doesn't care about this girl. He doesn't. He loves the fact that she is so attached to him. Her fingers are clawed into him because she's such an emotional wreck that she has to cling on to him for 
some sort of validation or dopamine intake or feeling like she's heading in the right direction and boogie loves that oh he savors that shit oh yeah and you know boogie can say i'm not gonna i'm not gonna have any money to give her where's all the money going well he's moving a second roommate in <laughs> so like his his mortgage is like 21 2200 a month right and if he has two roommates in which sounds like he is just letting them live there essentially for free because they do everything for him like mow the grass probably get his groceries probably wipe his ass probably clean the house they do all that stuff i don't know what des is doing she's probably hanging out with her plushies she's not really doing anything she's filleting boogie in her free time and so those two guys probably only spend like 300 bucks on rent or something like that so instead of boogie being able to crush down the mortgage to like 800 bucks a month or 700 bucks a month because he still claims that the area he lives in is like a nice area and he lives in a five bedroom house so if he has two friends like hell if i had a successful friend like that that lived in a nice area that i wanted to live in he had a huge house that he wasn't utilizing and said hey you want to come live in this house for i don't know 700 dollars a month rent I'd be like, hells yeah I do, because my other options would be to go get an apartment for like 1200 bucks. So I'll save that 500 and go live with Boogie or my friend at that moment. So it's like, I don't know, I don't know. He's being taken advantage of, he's taking advantage of other people. It's just a whole circle of regardation going down. Um, Because it's not a good one. And nothing I'm about to say is an excuse. Mm, let's hear it. But the headspace that I was in in 2018 mm. um, was not a very good one. And so I was not planning for a potential future because I did not feel that I had. One. Yeah. Uh, in 2018, Christmas, I had planned to take my own life. Mm -hmm. And I made it to that Christmas date and I decided to postpone it for the dumbest reasons. Uh, Christmas Day, I'm sitting there alone. I have my dog in my lap and my roommate's out of town. And I realized my dogs are going to be sitting there with my dead body for three days. And I'm like, you know what? I need to wait. Here comes the sob story, guys. Here it comes. Boogie, Boogie probably, the, the actuality of the story was he probably remembered that he could have taken out his phone and gone to the McDonald's app and saved himself 50 cents on on a, on a double cheeseburger. So he, he went with that avenue and forgot what he was thinking about the entire time. That's, that's why I think is a more likely story. I know, I know there's people out there saying, saturated, you can't be critiquing things like that. This is a, this is a sensitive subject. This is a personal topic. You can't be judging. You don't know him. You don't know what he was going through. Yet, Boogie, this happened five years ago. He claims he's over it. He's claiming he's moved past it. It doesn't affect me anymore. But anytime somebody comes and criticizes me, I'm going to say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Five years ago, I thought it was all over. Why would I care about myself? Boogie, that's five years ago. <laughs> your entire body is different from five years ago. You could have changed everything in your entire life. Everything in your entire life, or at least started to, in those five years. What have you done? You've only gotten worse. <laughs> You've only gotten worse since then. You've claimed you've changed for the better. I'm a new Boogie. I'm so much better than I was back then. You're the same person, Boogie. Nobody who has above a 70 IQ is falling for your tricks and your deception. And it's unfortunate that the only person who really is doing that is your 20 year old girlfriend who lives inside your, you know, your, your, your penthouse, your, your bad boy shack. That's the only one who's falling for it. Probably rightfully so, but for whatever reason, I think I'm held to a, a standard that I don't know that I'm good enough for. I'm going to say- Well, you also react to everything. Time. And you you, you feed them. Too. You yeah, feed yeah. them. It's the, I haven't yeah, opened TikTok yeah. in like two months. So it's like, yeah, a lot of the things that you, you want to a lot of the things you want to talk about have really changed since March. Whatever works for you, man. I right? would, old boogie uh, a year ago. Yeah. The egotistical, um, self centered, extremely defensive you man. Think you're different considerably. Okay. I spent way too much on a dog. How much? He's a purebred miniature poodle. Sure. Which generally will cost you about three. 3000 to 3500 Okay. I bought him in a pet store, so I paid five. <laughs> How much money did you have at the time? Oh, about $108,000 in the bank. Oh, yeah, that's okay. Uh, but again, I was in well, the mind that I needed to build maybe. credit, so I took out a loan. 
What the f***? Is that the personal loan? Yeah, that's the personal loan. Dude, you're killing that's me. That's the, I mean, that's the loan. That's, that's the, the loan. that's the synchro name. It's the synchro name. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, everybody's too hard on them, guys. Come on. Why would you have expectations for somebody? Why would you do that? Boogie, Boogie is just scum underneath the bottom of our shoes. Unless it uh, conveniently isn't that for him and he can be the victim in a different perception. You know, if he can lord over you in some way, he's going to take advantage of that. He clearly doesn't view himself as below the bottom scum of the earth. He just uses that to try and manipulate you, so don't fall for it. That's just a boogieism that he likes to do. It's it, it's no big thing. It's 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 no big thing. But it's cute that he thinks that he's such a change formulated person. And and Caleb picks up on that. He's like, you really think that's true? Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm sure you've really changed for the best. I mean, we all know why you're on the show. We all know because there's really a there's a ticking clock on the Boogie channel and it's uh it's probably not gonna turn out very well. And it's cute because if you remember we talked about his dog in the previous episode where he said I really don't care about this dog. Who? Dog. Boring. I know I spent 3k on it, but who cares? It's too active. I need a dog that just sits there. I can't have a dog that is energetic. And he was getting another dog to try and replace his other dog. It's just like a weird, morbid thing. It's like... I, I mean, I, I have some issues with spending that much money on a purebred dog, too. Like... In, in some regards, I understand going to shop for a dog because if you want a specific breed of dog, sometimes it's hard to find in like a pound. But, but you could have literally gone to the pound and spent ten dollars on a dog that would probably be more mild tamed than the one that you got. And he's like, "I'll just get rid of it. Who cares? We'll move past it. It's it's no big thing. It's like that's how you know Boogie's not a very good person." <laughs> <laughs> how somebody treats animals is a clear indication of how good or bad somebody is. And it, it just so happens that uh, Boogie's a bad guy. Shocker, I know. I won't. Okay. Late payment fee! October 31st! Late payment fee! Yeah. $25! Late, late payment fee December 1st! This just happened! Yep. Oh, f*** me. October was a very lean month. <laughs> oh, and you have a brand new iPhone. Dude, this phone was free. Really? Yeah, Verizon traded us an iPhone 7 for that. Mm, very Thank important you, business <laughs> purpose, uh, Chick-fil-A. Lucky it was all the way back Dude, you eat. Don't you eat? I eat. People eat. Not I definitely out. eat. I eat a lot. No, nah, you don't have to eat out if we can't afford to Dude, live. I can't cook for I can't cook for three people for cheaper than twelve dollars. Okay, so it's more convenient taste. taste. There we and go. On top of that, so now there's more reasons. It's affordable, right? You we eat out two or three days a week. It adds up to fifteen dollars. Two or three days a week. Yeah, fifteen, thirty, forty-five but, bucks. But it you adds can't afford up to, to pay the card. Well, I yeah, that's true. We do eat? We do eat groceries at home. We have like uh, some of the inexpensive meals we make. We make tacos. We make shrimp pasta. Uh, if I'm really feeling splurgy, we'll make burgers at home. Uh, we eat at home the majority of the Good. time. Yeah. So Boogie's clearly lying here. Anybody that's going to try and tell you, oh yeah, I feed three people, three people on a fast food diet and we only go out once. Don't worry guys, we only go out once. It's not like we saw the Mike Clum documentary where he felt bad for five minutes and decided to stop and get $30 of Taco Bell. We'll move past that part. It's not like that happens on a regular basis. No, no, of course not. Instead, he spends $15. He claims, yeah, we go to Chick-fil-A. I just, we just get three chicken sandwiches for $5 a pop. Yeah, I'm sure, Boogie. You're not getting fries. You're not getting a slushy. You're not getting a drink. Yeah, I'm sure. You're only getting one sandwich. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's, that's really likely, bud. And the crazy part is people can't comprehend the fact that shopping for your own food is 100% of the time, every single time, probably healthier and cheaper. People don't understand that because they're like, well, when I go to the grocery store, I spend 150 bucks. Well, yeah, because the things hopefully that you're buying, if you're actually buying ingredients to cook with and you're not buying ho-hos and other processed box garbage, then you're buying food that can be made into multiple meals, right? So you spend that money and it's more up front, but you get more out of it in the back end versus if you spend 
let's pretend $15 for one meal, one singular meal, every single time, <laughs> and we know Boogie's not going home. I don't know where this whole thing is. Oh yeah, we're making burgers at home. I'm sure he probably does eat sandwiches from time to time, but let's not pretend he's over there making burgers and making meatloaf and making salads in, on a consistent basis, all right? That's not a thing. That doesn't exist. Maybe Des will pick it up. Maybe she'll finally contribute to the family aspect that's going on in this weird polyamorous clown show house that's existing in Fayetteville. Then I'm struggling here. Do you give do you care? I do. It's uh, again. Then stop. Be an adult. <laughs> Act your age is what I would say. I mean, that's fair. Uh, again, food has not been a area that I have been very successful at controlling. Trust me, I can't really talk about it either. Dude, let me tell you. I, at least I can afford it. I've taken it's bigger than you. <laughs> okay? Oh. All right? Listen to me, dude. I've eaten more than you at a buffet before. Just please okay? not in my bathroom, All right? please. You, I, I appreciate that you think you know what it's like to be addicted to food. Mm. I promise you, you don't. I think it's cute for Boogie. He, he, he'd be the exact same person to say it's a transgression to attack somebody for their size and for what they think about themselves. But he'll turn right around and say, you don't, you don't understand what it's like to have a food problem. There's, there's a scale to that, buddy. There's a scale. Yeah, you're in the vast higher upper scale where you are so fat, you get surgery and you fail the surgery and you're still fat. That's the scale you're in. There are people on the lower scale who are consistently overweight and fluctuate in yo-yo up and down 20 pounds or so because they have an unhealthy correlation of food. And as somebody who's been 400 pounds before, I think I'm completely aware <laughs> of what being addicted to food is. Probably not to the, to the gravity that you're attached to it, but I also understand that there are certain times and there are certain instances that I have no control over what I eat. And if you've ever seen the movie The Whale, I have plenty of criticisms about The Whale. But the one scene that I feel like was done super well was when Brendan Fraser starts binging when he gets like really upset over something. And he just devours like everything in the kitchen. Now that's like the biggest highest most caloric example you could give but there are variations to that instance and i think people that have issues with food nobody that is over i shouldn't say overweight nobody that's obese has a healthy relationship with food but that's okay you can you can critique them whatever when it, when it goes against you it's it's a transgression but when it's somebody else it's oh you don't understand the pain buddy look at me i'm fat and my girlfriend went. Your out editor, you pay your editor when I need to. Yeah, yeah. When he's when he's got a when he's got a project that we need Wait, to work on. Why aren't you why, why aren't you editing your own stuff? You have time, I assume. Um, he's incredibly better at it, and so if I have an actual project that needs to yeah. get done, and he works for minimum wage for me, to be very clear, because he's a friend. So, but occasionally he'll get a business dinner to talk projects and stuff. That throws off the average of 15 a day, turning it to what would probably be evenly distributed 20, 25 dollars a day, throwing the Starbucks maybe 30 dollars a day on average. Sure, yeah, yeah. So, if, if we actually start going off of that, and again, I wasn't able to do the normal math that I was able to do uh, before most episodes, we're looking closer to like 900 bucks a month. And I wouldn't be surprised. Let's, let's call it that then. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's definitely, there's definitely room to cut. Uh, I, I included in any time I talk about these budgets online, I generally say 600 for the stuff, but I, 900 might be more realistic. But you can't afford 600. That's true. Lending, uh, personal loan, 3,448. That's my dog. And do you want to know something? Worst investment in my life. Cause I don't even like the dog that much. <laughs> really? I love my first dog. He's like a, uh, he's my soul dog. He's like the member of the family. The second dog, he's mostly just a dog. So here's Boogie just really reinvigorating your spirit on how, how well he probably treats this dog in the background. He clearly probably just doesn't give it as much attention as the dog deserves. That's okay. We'll move past it. It's not that big. It's not that big of a deal, but the the biggest the biggest issue with this entire thing is that Boogie has an editor that he uses sometimes. And if you've ever watched any of Boogie's content, I would could not tell you <laughs> what a Boogie edited video and what this editor's videos look like because it's not like Boogie has any crazy overlays 
or you know After Effect plugin things going on in his videos. He's not doing crazy voiceover stuff. None of that stuff. Like, oh, this guy he did a zoom in. He took a bunch of clips and he edited them down into one comprehensive video. It's like, is that worth you paying an editor for? And I never will take this excuse from these people that they're like. Well, I'm just not good. I, that's what DSP says. I'm just not good at editing. I haven't figured it out. It's your job. What do you mean? There's plenty of times in my job where I have to learn a new software. I have to learn how to do something because that's part of my job. <laughs> it's like, for some reason, you feel like just because I, I didn't have to do in the past, I don't have to do in the future. You don't have money, buddy. Stop spending money on an editor for videos that don't get you any views. It's worthless. I, I mean, like it's the minimum payment is like twenty dollars a month. So off of a you know balance why? of a thousand, you know why the minimum payment is twenty dollars a month? Because they want that interest to continue to accrue. Oh, okay, all right. That's, I thought that's I was paying your all the benefit. interest off. No. Oh, well, buddy. the number the numbers numbers never broken over like a thousand. It's, oh, so. Buddy. No. My number, my okay. I'm now. I'm understanding where we might be in terms of financial knowledge. No, that's not how it works. Okay. With credit okay. cards. But then educate me. Yeah. Help, so help, yes, well, please. Well, the credit card for credit cards, we never want to hold a balance anyway. Because if okay. we're holding a balance, whether right. or not you're making a minimum monthly payment, it's accruing interest unless it's in an interest free period. So if I were to pay anything off first, it's clearly this dog loan. That's got to be right. What was nice? The next time I have you on, I want it because you've paid off. I mean, give me credit for one thing. I keep I keep it paid if I can, if it's at all humanly possible. Like if, if a bill is due, the bill gets paid. No, I obviously no. not the credit cards. Well, but like the loan pay, the, the loan payments get made. How can I give you that due? Nothing's though? defaulted at least. I can't be. Right? I can't give you that credit that's though. Fair. If if there's that's one fair. of the if one of any of the things are not being paid, I can't give you the credit of making the payments. Okay, that well, I mean, I'll still have to pay off this phone before I can get there. But yes. oh, oh, so the, I, wait, yeah, you like told me I said, the phone was zero dollars. It, it 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 added up to like there was a balance of. Four hundred and twenty dollars spread across twenty four months, oh. <laughs> but it's zero percent interest. I know, but we can't switch to another carrier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Infamous lies. In case you missed it before, he claimed that he turned in his iPhone seven for free at Verizon for a new phone, and I have Verizon, and I've turned in old phones in the past to get new phones. The most recent example I can think of is I traded in my iPhone 8 for an iPhone 10 that I still have today and it was essentially free I think I paid like a hundred bucks I think that's what the the transfer for it was Boogie claims yeah it was free it was just like 500 bucks that I have to pay in two years you don't have 500 bucks buddy an iPhone 7 is gonna work for you I don't know what you are you playing gotcha games over there you got WWE champions on your phone is that what you're trying to play over there and we find out right here that he doesn't understand what interest is he doesn't understand how credit cards work I mean the whole thing is if, if you're unaware if you're younger watching my videos if you get a credit card basically treat it like a debit card you use it to build your credit by buying things on it but you pay it off in full every single month you don't pay the minimum balance because that accrues interest and usually credit cards especially when you're younger and you're getting a credit card the interest rate is probably going to be like 28 <laughs> percent so it's just gonna the whole goal is to keep you in debt forever that's the whole task of it it's unfortunate but if you understand how credit cards work, you can use them to help manipulate the system. You can get money back, you can get travel miles, you can do a whole bunch of things. And don't fall for the trap that Boogie's falling for. Pay off your credit cards in full every single month. I'm curious, uh, do you find yourself throughout your life uh, playing justification games? Certainly, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, it just might be something worth escaping in the future is just instead of trying to justify like every last uh, last thing, a reason for everything happening, reason why I did this, the reason why uh, I made this choice is because of this whole winded thing of a character I'm trying to do and all this stuff. Well, in instead therapy, of just justification. Well, well, in therapy, we learn why we do things, right? Um, I know why. I, mm -hmm. During the Frank Castle situation, when a man was battering down my door calling me a... Uh, the N word and an F A G G O T and and all the I know why I opened that door. Yeah, 
It's insane. It adds an additional, what, 20% to your budget, 15% to your budget. And we can't even survive in yeah. the needs. Oh. It's, it's just really no longer a choice. So you're choosing at this point, even yes, addictive tendencies. I get it. And that is not my thing to talk about. Um, if you choose to do that after this conversation, you you've chosen just giving up and just, well, like, I mean, after this conversation, I'm going to continue to do what I've been doing for the last 30 to 45 yeah. days, which is work as much as I humumanly possibly can. How many hours a day do you think that I'm is? putting in like a good 40 hour work week now? Okay. Well, yeah. I think that when we can't survive, I think that needs to be 60 to 80. Yeah, that's fair. Pretty rich coming from Boogie. First off, I, I'm not super well versed in the whole Frank Castle thing. I don't think he was bashing down his door trying to break through his window, climbing through the air ducts inside of his house to get inside. I don't think that's what was actually happening. I think Boogie was just having a manic episode. Secondly, it's it's so it's so rich. This man saying, Oh, you know, I'm working as as, as hard as humanly possible. As hard as humanly possible. Yeah, that's like 30, 40 hours a week. <laughs> All you can do is laugh at that point. Boogie, I'm working a full-time job, and I'm doing YouTube on the side. I'm probably working, I don't know, like 60-hour weeks plus to try and maintain that. Probably more than that. Probably like 70 hours a week doing this stuff. And it's like, I enjoy it. That's why I do it. And I have some, some passion in it. And <laughs> I have some people that are looking forward to it. And you're just looking to make a quick buck. And it's like... As soon as Caleb calls him out on that and says, well, you have to work like 60 to 80 hours to make it work. Boogie's like, yeah, that's fair. That sounds right. So you're obviously not working <laughs> as many hours as you could. You're just doing the bare minimum to try and skirt by. And yeah, that's cute. That's cute of you, Boogie. And, you know, it's, it's, it's your life. You make of it what you want. And what you want is the easiest, quickest way out. And the way you do that is anytime you're confronted with anything uncomfortable, you say, yeah, you're probably right. That's probably what I should do. Pathetic. Makes sense. There you go. I would apply to these, these billion, trillion, quadrillion jobs. I have. I have. I'm, t I'm telling you. I've done this exact thing in the You've last year. You've applied for all of them. No, I've applied for over a dozen. And I oh, kept getting told the same thing, which is, dude, you're unemployable. Yeah. So even for the people that are very employable, though, yeah, applying for a dozen jobs, you likely won't right. get a single job. I, okay. All, like, I had that headhunter yeah. tell me off camera, mm -hmm. man, there's nothing we're going to be able to do for you. I don't think there's anything about you need to focus on the YouTube thing. Okay. Favorite thing is, is always to punch back against certain mindsets and try to push yeah. people, push people to better themselves. Yeah. So that's, this is what I try. Well, and like I said, all. I promise you, I'm not giving up hope. If it, yeah, comes, if, like, yeah. if it comes down to my YouTube channel is no longer making me money anymore. Yeah, yeah. And I, I literally have to steal for a living. I'll do it. Well, let's not do that. <laughs> no, but I wouldn't. I, I, I'm telling you, if I have to steal bread to feed my family, I would be that guy. Yeah. Right. I will do whatever it takes to survive. The French Revolution, he'd, he'd steal bread for his family, guys. Don't you worry. I know it's, uh, he, 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 you know, a security camera might catch him. He, he'd be, I don't know, 60 feet away from the door when the cops arrive 30 minutes later. So, you know, it's, it'd, be, it'd be a little bit hard to, to get away with a heist like that, Boogie. But, hey, keep on dreaming, bud. At least you have some goal for the future. And it's cute that he's talking about, I got fortunate when I came out of school. I had work experience in my career field, and I had connections in the city that I... But I still applied to more places than Boogie did. <laughs> I have way more options than he did, and I got to interview to a lot more places. But it's, it's, it's funny, because in my mind, I hear the dozen number. And part of me is like, I don't know if Boogie's still on disability payment. I know he's on disability through the government, but I don't know if he's getting paid through it still or if there's some benefits involved. But I know with a lot of those things, they typically try and make you try and find employment. It's the same with like parole. <laughs> it, you have to show proof that you're trying to find employment. And Boogie's probably just bombing all these things. Also, just as a final note, Boogie could find a call center job because there's plenty of call centers that I'm aware of that they will hire literally anybody. Felons, disabled people, blind people, doesn't matter. As long as you can pick up a phone and call somebody, they will hire you because they need bodies. And you're a body, Boogie. And sitting down is something you can do. I know you can't do, like, manual labor, which would be much more plentiful, but... <laughs> That's an option for you. 
Either way, I rambled on long enough. This is my longest boogie video yet. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you think Boogie's lying about anything else. And until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.